Welcome. Welcome. I'm Russ Curtis. I just want to talk about Beck's cognitive model here. I want to thank the students who've helped with this uh, diagram as well, this flow chart that we have going here. All right, so with Beck's cognitive model, and we're looking at a, an example of a relationship breakup. So you've got a client who has come to you, uh, recently had a relationship breakup, obviously upset. According to Beck's cognitive model is that this person's got a core belief. Okay, now we don't know exactly what that is, but I'm unlovable, I'm powerless. Uh, these are common ones that folks can have. So that's a core belief. Be that is beyond awareness most likely at this time for the person. And so that core belief, kind of almost this faulty hard drive, is then affecting the operating system for the person, if you will. And creating these intermediate beliefs, which these may be a little bit more accessible to the person. These are the attitudes that they've developed towards life and people, to the rules that they've developed for themselves and others, and just general assumptions that they operate under. So if somebody's core belief is I am powerless, kind of, and I'm just summing this up, the rules, attitudes, and assumptions may be, hey, life stinks. Life is not good. It's not satisfying. Then you have the automatic thought. So we have this relationship breakup, the automatic thought they are aware of. Okay, so this is what they come to counseling with. Nothing ever works out for me. Uh, I, I, am not, I am not successful in relationships. They may not be able to trace that back to a core belief, but they know that's in their head. That's what they're talking about in counseling. So they have this automatic thought, nothing ever works out for me, uh, as evidenced by this re relationship that broke up. And there may have been others as well in their past. This leads to reactions such as emotional reaction could be that they're feeling hopeless. Behavioral, they may start to isolate and decide, hey, I'm not going to even put myself out there anymore for relationships. And physiologically, they may experience low energy. There may be uh, different kinds of you know, changes in sleep and eating patterns and so forth as well. So the key here, however, is the treatment. And with Beck's cognitive model, a big portion of the treatment would be Socratic questioning. So getting people to really question their automatic thought to see if we can't trace that back to like a deeper rooted thought. So we may say, yeah, I'm hearing that this is hard relationship breakup and you don't feel like anything ever happens. But what's where's the evidence that that's always going to be the case? And we'd want to process that with the client with empathy. You know, where is the evidence? And um, uh, because this happened, because this relationship happened, does this mean that every other relationship in your life is going to be unsatisfactory as well? Or that you should just give up? Um, so we're asking these questions for the client to start taking a closer look at their uh, kind of their operating system and perhaps get to a core belief. Now, I don't get too terribly caught up in the treatment. And as a counselor educator, I'm interested in the treatment. Uh, we can create these fancy theories and models, but what I'm interested in is people getting better. And what I, I there's a question that I love uh, for, from a cognitive perspective is, hey, this nothing ever works out for me. I'm unlovable. Where do you think you learned that? I like this for a couple reasons. It causes a pause. It causes the client to pause for a minute and move from instead of, oh, I'm unlovable to, hey, maybe this isn't me. Maybe this is something I learned and maybe this isn't who I am innately am that I grew, that I was born with this, that I actually learned this maybe in my family, in my culture, in the belief system I was raised in, you know, I, I just learned at a very early age that I was inadequate or I was severely flawed. And now that's affecting my attitudes rules. I have these automatic thoughts that then kind of can sabotage me at, in careers and relationships and so forth. So I love that question to get people outside themselves and realize, wow, wait a minute, if this isn't who I truly am, this, this is in a part of my DNA gene makeup, then maybe I learned it. And anything I learned, I can unlearn. Now that can take practice. And so we really have to work on that. So we might use some cognitive restructuring. We might do some mindfulness techniques, some metacognition. So to help them recognize, oh, there's me having that thought again that I'm worthless. 
And I can decide whether I want to entertain that thought and focus on it, or if I want to move to something that's actually more satisfying to, to focus on. So again, using Beck's cognitive model, but moving it more towards what is the treatment in it. They would typically stay with the cognitive, with the Socratic question, and I think that can be effective uh, in help process. And clearly we're never denying the issue here. The relationship's hard. We want them to have time to talk about this. But anyway, to make that as practical as possible, let me know your thoughts on this, and we will talk to you on the next video. Take good care.